All right, guys, welcome back. So this video, I'm going to talk about how to paint detail castings. And I'm going to use this, uh, one of my recent builds I did, uh, this Huxley and Powell kit. And you can tell there's all different types of uh, detail around a building, including tires and um, all types of cinder blocks and all types of stuff. Even um, if you look over here, you can see the strip wood that I actually weathered up as well. So we're going to focus on... Um, how to detail windows, uh, metal castings, and also plastic castings. All right, so stand by and we'll be right back. So we're gonna start off with how to do plastic castings. And um, when you buy plastic castings, you know, you, they may come like this. And this is an example from uh, Titchy Train Group. And they're gonna come in packs on the sprues. And some modelers paint these right on the um, the sprues and cut them out um, I personally cut them out and then I mount them on cardboard and I paint them uh, on cardboard I, I paint them separately so one of the things that you have to remember is these need to be primed so when you put primer on them you want to make sure that you're using a decent quality primer but what I found some great luck with is this uh, Napa color line primer now the part number on this is uh let's see is dc 540 gray primer and what's nice about this primer it's it's only like three dollars a can and also when it does come out it comes out very thin and you're not going to lose much detail on your casting parts so it also sets up pretty quick so um we're going to look at these castings here that I, that I just primed and the ones that we're going to focus on today are the barrels. And these are plastic barrels from Titchy as well. And uh, I'm going to show you how to paint them. So I started off with a primer. And you don't have to um, put a heavy coat on. Just enough to, to cover up. And you want something that your paint is going to stick to. So I highly recommend a uh, some, tor some sort of primer. I always like to start with gray. But you can start with brown if you want. It all depends. So let's get set up. And I'll show you how to paint these castings. Real easy. All right, so we're going to start off with painting. I'm going to keep one gray, and then I'm going to paint one yellow and one red. So the colors I'm using is this Apple Barrel Tuscan Red. And I'm also going to use this Folk Art uh, Moon Yellow. So again, we're going to, just going to dip it into the paint. And it's almost like a dry brushing technique. I don't want a lot of paint on the on the sponge. So the great thing about using transfer tape, um, if you're using transfer tape or however you're securing it you know, to your cardboard, uh, you can actually keep the casting in place as you're painting it. So I'm just letting the sponge do the work right now. And it's okay that you don't cover everything because that's not the look I'm looking for. I'm looking for a more rusted look of a barrel. And there's other paints out there that you can use on castings. Um, whatever works for you. So I'm not really... I don't recommend any paint over another. It's just there's all different types out there. So whatever works. Now, I'm not too concerned about the bottom part of the barrel. Because what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to put a bunch of rust down there. Okay, so that one's done. So now we're going to switch over to the yellow, repeat the steps, and then we'll be right back. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over it with a um, burnt umber color. Same concept. I'm going to use the uh, torn piece of sponge and lightly, very lightly touch each piece. 
and this is going to represent rust pitting and stuff like that. You want to get the edges. And basically, wherever it hits, that's where it's going to be. And I'm still going to go over this with powders as well. So this, what this does, it's going to show another level of weathering. And also, it's going to show some nice rust pitting that's popping through. Let's see if you can see that. All right, so I'll be right back. Okay, another way you can paint the bottom of the barrels, since the sponge didn't reach the bottom of it, is what you can do is take another brush, dip it in your burnt umber paint. Same thing, you wanna get most of the paint off, and then do a stippling technique, and just hitting the bottom. And wherever the, wherever the rust goes, it goes. You want to do it like a, a downward stippling on it, almost like a 35, 30 degree angle, I guess. I have, I have no idea, but but you just want to concentrate on the bottom of the barrel. See if you can zoom in on that. So you can tell it's all weathered now. And it's going to look really good. So let's let's just focus on the yellow one for now as well, just to show you. You don't have to put a lot, just enough to cover it. And we're going to go over it again with powders. And that's it. So I'll be right back. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the um, windows, plastic windows. And we're going to treat these the same as we would the uh, the barrels. So, but I want to make sure that these are weathered in a way that looks like there was layers and layers of different types of uh, paint and colors and things like that. So we're going to use the uh, burnt umber as well on this one. And you want to make sure, again, that you're using a dry brushing method, but stippling at the same time. So you're going to want to, let's see, make sure on camera, and just lightly, just let the brush do its job. And you want to lightly, I mean lightly, just go over the piece. And what this is going to do, it's just going to tone down the primer and add a nice weathered look to the door or a window. You want to make sure that you get on the edges. And in all the corners and along the edges of the windows and doors as well. And this is just one step to many steps that we're going to do on these parts. And you can actually do a wash on these. There's different things that you can do. But right now I'm just concentrating on toning down the primer and making it look like a weathered look. Now these windows and doors are going to be going on a contest model. And I want to make sure that it's representing a nice weathered factory look. So let's take a peek at it. What it looks like. All right, so I'm going to continue on and we'll be right back. All right, so one of the things that I also do is I go in with a second color, and what I don't do is I don't clean the brush because I want to have that different type of colors going on the actual detail part. So it does not have to be totally clean when you go to the next color, and it's okay to mix it up. Same concept, we're going to be stippling 
and then going over with another color. We'll be right back. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is painting metal castings. Now, the castings that you buy in the commercial market are made of pewter, and they're made in spin casters. And I've actually done this before, so I know it's involved in making these. So one of the things that you have to consider or look out for is when you when you buy castings, you can see inside of this tire there's flashing in there. So you're going to have to go in there with a blade and clean up all the flashing around the part. Now this goes, this holds true for, for tires, for barrels, or any other type of uh, metal casting that you're using. So once you're done cleaning the pieces up, then you're going to either, you can prime them with regular automotive primer, or I've seen other uh, modelers, including myself, use a um, black pewter product, which basically it's a chemical reaction that, that takes this piece and makes it into almost like an antique um, finish. So it's, it's, it blackens it up and you can polish it and it's going to look really cool uh, once you're done with it. So I like to use the, uh, the black in it products or the, the pewter black products on the tires. And this is the, um, this is the result. So this is not, this is not painted with any type of primer or paint. This is basically the, uh, the etching material. Now where you get it, it's, you're going to have to find it online. Um, and see who offers it so I don't have any recommendations as far as the materials for that but you also can make palettes and these are really simple where you can just take this paint it or prime it and then paint it with a um, rust-oleum camouflage uh, khaki paint and then you can just use a wash over that and that's what I did here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these obviously these are all set to go but simple Simple castings such as these pewter cinder blocks can be easily weathered just by taking a little bit of alcohol India ink wash. And I'm going to show you how easy this is to do. And all you have to do is just hit it a little bit with a wash. And then once it dries, you get a little dry brush on there and your part is done. Cinder blocks are pretty easy to do. So I recommend when you're working with the pewter castings, get yourself some transfer tape, and this works well when you're painting them. The transfer tape will lock the part in place so you can paint it or stain it or do whatever you want to the part. So th that's pretty much it on metal castings. You can use regular craft paint on them as well. If you want to do barrels, um, that's fine. Now with these, I'm just going to get a little bit different uh, weathering mix. Maybe I'll use a little driftwood on these. And then I will just put a little bit more stain on theirs and make it look a little nicer. And if you want, you can actually hit the tires too. And then you can actually go over these tires with a little bit of uh, dry brush. And that's it. So doing... Uh, Metal castings is pretty easy. It all depends on the part you're, you're using, but you can use regular craft paint, you can use enamel paints, you can use washes, you can use oil washes on them. Either way, it's gonna look good. So when we come back, I'm gonna go over strip wood. All right, so before we get into the strip wood, one thing I wanna show you is you can also, we're back on our plastic um, barrels. Once the paint is dry, then you can actually go over this with a wash. So the wash I'm going to use on this one is the uh, Hunterline Weathering Mix. And this is going to be rust color. So you just want to just lightly hit it and let the stain do the rest of the work for you. And once these dry, these these will dry with a little bit of a rust deposit along the top. And I'll show you what it's going to look like in just a second. So 
we hold it up to the light, you can see the difference with just adding a wash to it. It definitely tones down the paint and makes it look very, very realistic. So we'll be right back. All right, so the last thing I want to go over with detail castings is strip wood. So when we're building models and things like that, you want to save all your extra scrap pieces and just throw them in a cup or a little container or something because they will come in handy later on. Especially when you want to detail a scene, something like this, little pieces of wood are will come in handy. You can just lean them up, up against other castings and um, it doesn't matter what color they are. It, it just adds that one more level of realism and layering that you want for your model. So let's take a peek at our strip wood and then I'll show you how to, to uh, weather it up. So I already pre-weathered this and what you do basically is just take it and just dip it right into the actual um, uh, bottle of weathering mix. All right. So what you can do with this is you can just take it and then cut it up into different size pieces. Use your cutting mat as a as a guide on how big you want your pieces to go. It can be just as simple as that. Now, I also have extra pieces from another project. So what I'm gonna do, is just, we're gonna throw them in this, this container here. So a little container like this will work. And then what you wanna do is add just a little bit of ink even though they've been weathered already, you want to weather them again. And that's just going to add another layer of weathering. So you're going to let those soak in there and then pull them out and put them on a paper towel. And I'll show you how to do that. Get a paper towel here. And what you do is you take your tweezers Pull them out. And you just lay them on top of the uh, paper towel to dry. These dry pretty quick. So once they're dry, then you can put them in place on your model. So I highly recommend you do this. Um, use all the scrap you can and just have fun with it when you're detailing a model. All right, so we'll be right back and I'll show you some finishing touches that you can do with detail. All right, so one last thing I want to show you about detail parts is uh, dry brushing. Now, for the dry brushing, you can use white, but for this, I'm going to use the uh, rain gray paint, which is a very light gray. So when you dry brush, again, all you want to do is just get the highlights of the, of the part. So whether it's the tire or even some of the wood here. these little detail castings and that's basically all you're doing is you're just highlighting some of the detail that's on the part and that's it and you don't have to do this it's just it's an option but it definitely um, brings your model to life so I hope you like this uh, this video on detail parts uh, definitely try it out for yourself and I'm sure you are going to like the results. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe. And I will see you at the next um, video. All right. Have a great day.